Hey YouTube, welcome to the IPv4 Subnet Mastery video series. Welcome to video 4. In this video, we go through a few more practice problems to further demonstrate how to solve subnetting problems. If you consider yourself proficient at subnetting, definitely at least check out the final two problems in this video. They illustrate how to work through some potentially confusing situations. In video 1, we illustrated the 7 attributes you can derive from a subnetting problem. In video 2, we covered how to create the subnetting cheat sheet. In video 3, we talked through these 7 steps to use the cheat sheet to solve for all the attributes. For more details on any of these, please check out those respective videos. In this video, we will simply run through the process 4 more times to give you additional practice and exposure to using the cheat sheet. We will do 2 easy problems and then 2 problems with specific peculiarities you might run into in the real world. Our first problem will be 27 this problem provides a CIDR of slash 27, which puts us in this column. The subnet row in our column lists 224, which means our subnet mask is 255.255.255.224. Then we will locate our group size. For a slash 27, the group size is 32. And we will start at dot zero and continue incrementing by 32 until we pass the target IP. So we have dot zero, then dot 32, dot 64, dot 96, and here we've passed our target IP of .88. At this point, we can just fill in all the remaining attributes. The number before our target IP is the network ID, which makes our network ID 10.2.2.64. The number after our target IP is the next network, which makes our next network 10.2.2.96. The IP address before the next network is our broadcast IP, which makes our broadcast IP 10.2.2.95. The IP address after the network ID is our first host IP, which makes our first host IP 10.2.2.65. The IP before our broadcast IP is the last host IP, which makes our last host IP 10.2.2.94. And finally, our group size is our total number of addresses. Our group size was 32, which means there are 32 total addresses in a slash 27. If we were being asked for the number of usable addresses, we would simply subtract 2 giving us 30 usable addresses in a slash 27. Our next example problem will be 10.2.2.111 slash 25. The problem provides a CIDR of slash 25, which puts us in this column. The subnet row in this column lists 128, which means our subnet mask is 255.255.255.128. Then we will locate our group size. For a slash 25, the group size is 128. Then we will start at dot zero, and increment by 128 until we pass our target IP. Dot zero, dot 128, and here in our first increment we've already passed dot 111. At this point we can just fill in all the remaining attributes. The number before our target IP is our network ID, 10.2.2.0. The number after our target IP is our next network, 10.2.2.128. The IP address before our next network is 10.2.2.127 which is our broadcast IP. Our first host IP is the number after the network ID, which makes our first host IP 10.2.2.1. And our last host IP is the number before the broadcast IP, which makes our last host IP 10.2.2.126. Finally, our group size of 128 is also the total number of addresses. And again, if we were being asked for the usable addresses, we would simply subtract 2, giving us 128 total addresses or 126 usable addresses in a slash 25. And there you have two more examples of how to solve for all seven attributes of subnetting using the cheat sheet and these steps. Next, we're going to run through two more problems. These two problems will show you situations that, if not for us talking through them, could lead to confusion. Let's get to it. We'll start off the same way. We are provided 10.2.2.20 and a CIDR notation of slash 30, which puts us in this column. The slash 30 lists 252 in the subnet row giving us a subnet mask of 255.255.255.252. Our group size for slash 30 is 4, so we'll start at dot zero and increment by 4. Dot zero, dot four, dot eight, dot 12, dot 16, dot 20. Notice our target IP is dot 20 and we've just hit dot 20. But notice the instructions say you must continue until you pass the target IP, which means we have to go one more increment to dot 24. What you are doing when you are listing all these values based upon the group size's increment 
is listing the network IDs for every slash 30 subnetwork within the 10.2.2.x network. When we landed on dot 20, this tells us our target IP is the network ID. From this point, we can continue as normal to solve for the remaining attributes. The number after our target IP is our next network, 10.2.2.24. The IP address before our next network is 10.2.2.23, which is our broadcast IP. Our first host IP is the number after the network ID, which makes our first host IP 10.2.2.21. And our last host IP is the number before the broadcast IP, which makes our last host IP 10.2.2.22. Finally, our group size of 4 is also the total number of addresses. The key takeaway from this problem is to highlight step 1D. Increment by your group size until you pass the target IP. If you don't, you'll end up solving for the 7 attributes of the wrong subnetwork. Alright, we've reached the final problem of this video. We will solve all 7 attributes for 10.2.2.199-26. It'll start like any other problem. We will use the provided cider or mask to find the respective column. Then we will find the appropriate subnet mask. For us, a slash 26 maps to the mask 255.255.255.192. Then we will find the group size. For us, it's 64. We will then start incrementing from dot zero until we pass the target IP. Dot zero, dot 64, dot 128, dot 192, dot 256. But wait. 256 is not a valid IP address. Each octet in an IP address can only be from 0 to .255. So even though 256 is the next increment, you can't simply write 256 and continue from there. Instead, you have to increase the next octet. As we said in the last problem, with this increment, you are listing out the network ID for each slash 26 subnetwork starting from 10.2.2.0. If we fill in the remaining octets for each increment, we can see this more plainly. This isn't just dot zero, it is 10.2.2.0. And this isn't just dot 64, it is 10.2.2.64, and so on. Which means, when we get to a place where we would have to increase to 256, we can instead set that octet to dot zero and increase the next octet by one. So the next IP in this series would be 10.2.3.0. If we needed to continue, we would proceed to 10.2.3.64 but we don't have to because we've already passed our target IP, which was 10.2.2.199. Once we've passed our target IP, the process continues as normal. The number before our target IP is our network ID, which makes our network ID 10.2.2.192. The number after our target IP is our next network. That makes our next network 10.2.3.0. To solve the broadcast IP, Remember, we are looking for the IP address immediately before the next network. Our next network was 10.2.3.0, and the IP right before that is 10.2.2.255. Our first host IP is the number after the network ID, which is 10.2.2.193. Our last host IP is the number before the broadcast IP, which makes our last host 10.2.2.254. Lastly, our group size is also the total number of IP addresses, which gives us a total of 64 IP addresses in a slash 26. The key takeaway from this problem is to understand how to continue incrementing into the next octet if necessary. At this point, you've seen the process of going through these steps six times. Now it's your turn. Open a web browser and navigate to pracnet.net slash subnet. You'll be taken to a subnetting problem generator that asks you to solve for five of the attributes we discussed. The form allows you to input your answers, check your work, and show correct answers. You can also type in your own problems if you want to practice with a specific IP or mask. See if you can get your timing down to around a minute to run through all seven steps. Once you've worked through a few problems on your own, you'll be ready to watch video five. In the next video, I'll show you four tricks that'll allow you to solve for all seven items even faster.